This week on The Vision. In 2001, David Wilkerson looked back on the book he had written almost 30 years earlier to assess his vision. He spent time on his knees before preaching at Times Square Church in New York City. What God told him in that time of prayer is that an hour of trouble is coming. The trouble included bankruptcies, judgment on the coasts, and a huge economic and social disaster in New York City. God told him prayer was the only answer to his condition. This is The Vision, written by the late David Wilkerson in 1974. When it was first published, the prophecies Wilkerson wrote about were unthinkable. Sadly, in the 21st century, these foresights now read like old news headlines. The Vision is brought to you by World Challenge, a ministry dedicated to empowering, equipping, and encouraging Christians in their daily faith. We are committed to evangelism and helping the least of these everywhere in the world. Now, Chapter 7 of The Vision, Excerpts from David Wilkerson's Prophetic Writings, read by Jason Staples. An Hour of Trouble is Coming From a message preached at Times Square Church, New York City, on August 19, 2001, three weeks prior to September 11th. As I spend time on my knees, asking God to show me His heart in these end times, I can't help sensing America is about to face another dire circumstance. I don't know what that is, whether it's an economic failure or massive unemployment or more terrorism. All I know is an hour of trouble is coming that will shake the whole world. And my heart weeps because for the most part, God's people aren't prepared. This coming hour will call for a flawless faith. And when that hour comes, Jesus will rise up a trusting remnant that heaven has been searching for. In every generation, the Lord has a trusting people, and this present generation is no different. We're going to see Christ calling forth his close circle of friends in this last hour. Warning Signs from Set the Trumpet to Thy Mouth, World Challenge Publications, 1985. Before the Great Holocaust, there will be smaller holocausts. The oil fields of the Middle East will be ablaze, and the smoke will rise day and night as a warning of the greater holocaust yet to come. There will be bombs falling on oil fields, shipping docks, and storage tanks. There will be panic among all oil producers and shippers, and upon all nations dependent on that oil. Soon, very soon, an economic nightmare will explode into reality. What frightful news it will be! O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. Jeremiah 51, 13. Judgment begins on the coasts. From Racing Toward Judgment, Pyramid Books, 1975. God's judgments have always begun at the entrance gates of nations, cities, and empires. There shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate. Zephaniah 1.10. This is representative of the seaports, harbors, and centers of influx. It is significant that most of the Old Testament prophets were warned of judgment beginning at the coasts. Zephaniah warned the Philistine cities, Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast! The word of the Lord is against you, and the seacoast will be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and folds for flocks. Zephaniah 2.5-6. Jeremiah, another prophet, warned nations that God's judgments begin as whirlwinds on the coasts of their lands, then spread from one end to the other. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil will go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth. Jeremiah 25, 32. Bankruptcies and Economic Chaos From Racing Toward Judgment, 1975 the gates thereof languish, Jeremiah 14, 2. God will judge this nation with economic disasters. Critical money problems will strike large and small cities alike. State and local governments will hang over the brink of bankruptcy. The rich man's wealth is his strong city and as a high wall in his own conceit, Proverbs 18, 11. The Fall of New York City from Racing Toward Judgment, 1975. New York City faces economic and social disaster. The sword of judgment hanging over the city will fall suddenly. Overnight, changes will happen, changes never before known to the American mind. Bankruptcy will happen. A temporary reprieve will falter. 
Short-range encouraging signs will be swallowed up in lightning-like events that will bring on bankruptcy. America's queen city will declare bankruptcy. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Proverbs 11.28 Howl, ye inhabitants of Machdesh, for all the merchant people are cut down. All they that bear silver are cut off. Zephaniah 111. Murder in Manhattan from Racing Toward Judgment, 1975. There will be violence everywhere, unheard of violence, unbelievable violence, unnecessary violence, uncontrollable violence. The violence that has been seething beneath the surface for years will explode. No city street will be safe. Teen gangs will once again erupt with unparalleled waves of violence. The aftermath of it all is an outbreak of raping, murdering, and burning. God's judgment will not be recognized or accepted. Men will curse God, and a spirit of lust and greed will overtake millions. An antichrist spirit will spread like terminal cancer. And I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood will be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Zephaniah 1.17 The fall of New York City will be but the first tolling of the bell of divine judgment. The ringing of that bell will be heard around the world. It will be a fearful sound. Experts will be astounded by the unexpected events that begin to unfold. No one could have accurately predicted the overlapping of events and tragedies. One bad report will lead to another. Judgment will come upon judgment. The rich will wail and weep. The poor will wander the streets helpless. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. Psalms 46, 6. High Energy and Fuel Costs from Racing Toward Judgment, 1975. God clearly warns in the Bible that judgment zones are inflicted with high energy and fuel costs. When Israel was under punishment from God, the people cried, We must even pay for water to drink. Our fuel is sold to us at the highest of prices. Lamentations 5.4 from the Living Bible Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Haggai 1.6 Rising Unemployment From Racing Toward Judgment, 1975 What God did to the city of Jerusalem in the time of the prophet Zechariah, he will do again to the cities of America. When building the temple, the inhabitants were reminded what God did when judgment was upon them. There were no jobs, no wages, no security. Crime was rampant. Zechariah 8.10, Living Bible. The prophet Hosea gives a vivid description of what can happen overnight to a business boom. He said it vanishes like dew, blows away like chaff, and disappears like smoke. Therefore they shall be as the morning cloud, and as the early dew that passeth away, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor, and as the smoke out of the chimney. Hosea 13.3 Swiss Banking Scandal From Racing Toward Judgment, 1975 I have been warning for years that a banking disaster will befall Switzerland. It is coming as surely as night follows day. The unnumbered Swiss bank account, the very epitome of security, will one day be insecure. There is coming a movement of vast sums of currencies. Scandals will be uncovered. The very foundations of the Swiss banking system will be shaken. The Swiss franc will suffer much as a result. Those who fattened their Swiss bank accounts hoping to live beyond the reach of danger are going to get hurt badly. God's word predicts it. Woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Habakkuk 2.9 Shall I pray for America now? Racing Toward Judgment, 1975 
To those who pray that God will spare America from divine judgment, I say, God will most likely answer through judgment. He will save America through judgment and will remove the stumbling blocks. I will consume man and beast and the stumbling blocks with the wicked, and I will cut off man from the land, saith the Lord. Zephaniah 1.3 Judgments coming on the earth should only encourage the Christian to pray and believe all the more for a cleansing and purging of perversion and violence. God is not running some kind of house of correction. He gave us freedom of choice. America has chosen its course, and there is no safe sanctuary outside of him. God will purge out of the land all idol worshippers and lovers of violence. This is exactly why God judged Israel. Every true Christian should pray earnestly for America. Pray for a cleansing. Pray for the overthrow of wickedness and violence. Pray for a spiritual awakening that will reach every segment of our society. But never pray to be spared from judgment just so that certain Christian business interests can be protected. I'm growing suspicious of some who pray that America will be spared judgment. Too many are trying to protect their own personal interests. They need boom times to keep afloat. They are personally afraid of judgment because they fear the loss of money, business, buildings, and even ministries. If a child of God has surrendered everything and is free from the bondage of materialism, there can be no fear of God's judgment. A few seem to be praying, Lord, save America from judgment so I can have more time to be more successful. God sees through all our phony burdens and proclamations of concern, and he knows every selfish motive. Others say, God can't judge America now. It must remain financially strong so that Christians can evangelize the world before Christ returns. I have heard all the prophecies and sermons about the great prosperity coming along with a great spiritual awakening. But I am responsible only to God's word, to preach what I know to be historically and scripturally true. God will always support the work of evangelism, even in hard times. The truth is that in times of judgment, Christians have always done more to spread the gospel. The coming judgment will do more to straighten out Christian values, do more to bring about a spiritual urgency, do more to break the spirit of confusion than anything else God could do for this present generation. So let every Christian pray that God will do what he knows is best. You've been listening to Jason Staples and his reading of chapter seven of The Vision, excerpts from David Wilkerson's prophetic writings. The Vision is brought to you by World Challenge, a ministry dedicated to empowering, equipping and encouraging Christians in their daily faith. We are committed to evangelism and helping the least of these everywhere. Next week on The Vision, what was God's message to America when the Twin Towers fell in New York in 2001? That's next week on The Vision.